All right, I am here with uh, a great human being, Corey <laughs> Jacoma. What's up, guys? This is uh, our third interview sure in uh, in a year, less yeah. than a year. Oh yeah, and so much has happened in that year. Oh, thank God. Started <laughs> out talking to you on Jersey, yeah, right. <laughs> Started out talking to you at Jersey Boys, and mm -hmm. we moved over to Paper Mill in Jersey, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. here we are on Broadway. On Broadway. Broadway. So you booked this in May, right? Yeah. We're here, we're here backstage at Beautiful, in yeah. case you're all wondering. Um, and that's Jessie. And that's, she'll, yeah, she'll be hopping in yeah. and out of, <laughs> out of the camera. Um, yeah, I booked it in May, and then, you know, I forget, I think it was in August, in early August, they announced closing. Uh -huh. And so I was sitting on this news for, for a little bit of time, and then they announced closing right before I started rehearsal. I was like, you kidding. <laughs> um, was I really cast? Like, yeah, I was, I was like, I was expecting them to pull the rug out from underneath me any day now. Yeah, um, but thank God they didn't, and I got to get two months in, and I got to do the role at all because it's been a, it's been a freaking dream. Yeah, and yeah. you're probably one of the most positive people that I know. So, I oh, knew, thank you. I knew your attitude about getting <laughs> canned to be right after you yeah, were cast, man. And it's not even getting canned. I mean, they no. obviously didn't know, or they wouldn't have been casting probably exactly. for it. Exactly, um, and you know it. It the the positive way to flip it is that I got to I get to be the last Jerry Goffin on Broadway and and that is a really cool thing to say and you know it doesn't matter you had your Broadway debut amen to that that's all that matters <laughs> now you can just stop acting right yeah right it's all over it's all over from here how did you prepare for the role and had you been going out for Broadway mm -hmm. already because you had been in so many shows what you was your trajectory in that so I mean I've been going in for Broadway shows for years yeah. um, and and I you know I was on tour with Jersey Boys did mm -hmm. it off Broadway and then while I was at Paper Mill um, doing my very own British Invasion there was nothing in the pipeline and it was sort of the first time in my career that I I didn't have something lined up and mm -hmm. that was scary and so I decided my girlfriend was doing Diana the new Princess Diana musical coming to Broadway in March <laughs> um, uh, she was doing that at La Jolla in San Diego and so I, I went out there and just like hung out for like two months just sort of you know disconnected and and wasn't going in for a ton of stuff I did a few self tapes here and there but like mm -hmm. nothing crazy um, and it was kind of nice to separate myself from the industry, but I found for the first time that I it was my first time sort of having to sit with Corey without a job and mm -hmm. without, you know, some sort of, um, not validation, but security, I guess. Um, and so I learned a lot about myself, and then as soon as I got back to the city, I was hungry, and I yeah. was like, let's go, let's hit the pavement. And, uh, and Beautiful was one of my first auditions uh, when I got back. It was... I was in for Beautiful and Book of Mormon in like the same week. And I was like, I'll take either. That's right, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I had a work session for Beautiful with mm -hmm. the uh, the associate director. And then the following week, I had I had the audition with, uh, it was the director, uh, the music director, uh, I believe the associate director was there, and the book writer. Mm -hmm. And... I've never experienced anything like it. I, I walked in the room and I had been busting my tail on this material. I walked into the room and it, I was, I just felt like I was the role. I was like, oh, I, I was like, I, I think I got this. I think I got, like, I walked out of the room and I was like, I think I might have booked that. It was the first time I've ever felt that way in my entire life. Really? In, it was, in all this time that you've been? Yeah. yeah. It, it was. It was incredible. It was like the first time that I was like, I nailed that. This is something that that comes very naturally to me. He's a character I can tap into, and I'm I'm very proud of what I'm doing. And that's the hardest part about leaving it after two months is that I'm proud of what I'm doing, and I wish that I could be doing it longer. Do you think because you had that break uh, in in between to kind of focus on yourself? Do you think that you had that confidence yeah. going in that you knew it was yours? Yeah, I think that 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 time and spending time with myself and you know learning to love myself in a different way really helped me be more emotionally vulnerable because this role is pretty much you know all about emotional vulnerability, um, and also it allowed me to be at peace with not needing it, you know, and I think that's something that as actors we we have trouble with because. It, it, this is our livelihood right. and it's so inconsistent and it's 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 tough um, and so you know 
there's a desperation that that we as actors sometimes naturally just bring into the room where it's like I need this like give me this job like I, I'm right for this whereas I, I felt like I walked into that room just being like here's what I'm gonna give you I, I worked really hard on this it's like I, I made a really good pie mm -hmm. and I spent so much time so much effort put so much love into it and I was like here you go if you like it great if not I'll bring this pie to another person and hopefully they'll like it and that's how it felt walking into the room that time you know it's funny um, that you talk like that because you know we are friendly on Facebook we, yeah. we interact a lot on Instagram and you have the appearance of somebody who's always confident and fun Thank having you. a good time and, and just a, a good guy and I try no one, would, <laughs> no one would know that you were having you know a struggle and, yeah. and that kind of thing well, I mean that and that's the 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 beauty of social media. Well, yeah, right? I was going to say that. Facebook it's, happy, it's, right? it's not the <laughs> negative side of, of social media, but, you know, social media is not everything. Right. And, and it, social media is a highlight reel. And, uh, and you know, like, I'm, I'm not posting. I'm not sitting there being like, oh, hey, guys, I'm freaking out that I'm closing in two days. <laughs> like, right, right. You know, like, it, that's that's not something that, that – that's Corey's journey. And right. I don't – you know, I want to bring everyone on my journey, but there are some things that, you know – I need to deal with on my own and that everyone needs to deal with on their own and and nerves and all that sort of stuff is something that I'm trying to master uh, during my journey speaking of your journey now yeah. now that the show is wrapping up it's mm -hmm. run uh, do you have a, a more of a confidence in yourself because yeah. you booked it yeah you know it's funny um, the the past few weeks leading up to this week not so much I was having a tough time staying present and and you know, just like enjoying where I was uh -huh. because I was thinking, well, I don't have something lined up, so what am I going to do? And you know, after this, I've got a dog to take care of. And this yeah, and that, you know. yeah, you know, and, yeah. and I started spiraling, but, you know, recently I've, I've become at peace with it. And, you know, and as things are starting to pick up audition wise, I'm like, okay, like there are opportun opportunities that are, you know, opening up for me. And, and you know, I'm, I'm doing the work and I'm putting the work in and I'm proud of the work that I'm doing. And uh, I'm excited to see uh, to see what comes out of it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you've got quite a momentum going. Thank you. I, I mean, for three different projects in one year, that's fantastic. It feels incredible. Yeah. It feels pretty incredible. Yeah. You've also been uh, performing with your band a lot more, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so <laughs> band it, characters. It, it's not my band, oh, but your band. I was so I was subbing for uh, my buddy Zach Zach Zaramatidis, who's playing Donnie Novitsky on the Bandstand National Tour, um, and his band All My Sons. You can find them on Spotify, iTunes, anywhere music is found. All My Sons, they're incredible, um, and their bassist couldn't make a couple of their gigs. So he was like, "Hey, Corey," he I I think his exact words were he FaceTimed me and he was like he's like, "Hey, dude." You consider yourself pretty musically competent, right? And I was like, <laughs> You're like I, I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he was like, like you play guitar and, and piano. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, like if we needed you to learn bass, you could do it for a gig, right? And I just started laughing because I I love their music and like I I'm sort of like a fanboy of their of their band. Um, as as close of friends as they are, I'm like, you guys you guys are cool. <laughs> and so when they asked me, I was just like. <laughs> um, and so uh so yeah I subbed I subbed on two of their gigs Mercury Lounge and uh oh there was uh Arlene's Grocery mm -hmm. um and so we played we played played like an hour and a half set and I learned bass in a week so that I can sub their gigs was that your first time playing first time. in places like that in New York? oh yeah first time like playing that's like, pretty I, cool when I was in high school I was in a high school yeah, band yeah, yeah. but like but nothing not like, the Mercury you didn't yeah, play the Mercury didn't Lounge play Mercury, Mercury well, Lounge no I know right clearly, come on, come on. now I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no but it was a lot of fun and I just I felt like a rock star it was cool did it give you any uh desire to form a band of your own or like take a crowbar to the guy who <laughs> little Nancy no, Kerrigan no actually? but I, I always I keep on telling them I'm like anytime you need a bassist I'm yeah. in um, but if anything, it inspired me to get more in touch with my musician side uh -huh. and gave me a little bit more of a kick to, to continue my writing and cause I want to release an EP and on almost every freaking interview I've done recently, I've been yeah. like, I'm going to release an EP by the end of the year, end of the year, end of the year. TikTok, I don't think it's going to happen by the end TikTok, of the year. Man, it's, it's, <laughs> but we're almost in November. I know, right? But I think, you know, I think a more realistic approach is by middle of next year, release an EP. 
Well, you can keep saying it in interviews, but you kept booking jobs that are getting. I know that are getting in the way. That's the problem. It's it's not like you're just sitting home, like "Ah, I'm just going to play with Jesse. Yeah, I'm just like. Like, uh, nah, not today. Maybe yeah, not today. The I'm next like, interview, I'll push it back. Like, that's a good idea for a song. Not yeah, today. Not today. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are some of the things you write about? Um, love. It's a lot of love. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of, uh, a lot of, like, just having fun and living life. And also, I, I very much uh, am inspired by my mistakes and my triumphs. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of them are, are sort of, like, uh, you know, heartbreak songs, but it heartbreak in terms of like l- what I learned from it. And, uh, and recently I actually wrote a song for a friend who went through a, a weird relationship thing mm-hmm. and, uh, and he, he was hurting from it and a song just came, it was the fastest I've written a song and I'm actually really proud of it and it might be on the EP. <laughs> Which will not be out this year. No, 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 definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> and if it is, you'll be. We'll be in for number four. So you'll there know. we go. There we go. Done. So now that you've booked your first Broadway show and yep. you have this newfound confidence, will you go back in for Book of Mormon? Are you uh, starting to be seen now in rooms because you were on Broadway? Uh yeah. Which I didn't expect. I I was just like cool. You know, having a Broadway credit obviously. Ha- you know speak some sort of uh narrative of of what i can do but you know there are much much more talented people than me that haven't been on broadway um and so so having a broadway credit isn't the end all be all that's not the ticket um and so but i have noticed i've been going in for things that are a little bit more exciting and and uh not so much getting more attention from casting or anything but more more just uh i think that there's a a level of like uh seriousness mm-hmm. in my in my work um that is that is taken when i walk into the room i think that it's you know because i always present myself like that but i think that having this credit makes them go oh his his work has paid off before right so let's see if it'll pay off again and they there's a, a heightened awareness of that I and think. almost probably a heightened confidence yeah oh absolutely ability. From Absolutely. their part, and you already know you are good enough. So it's like sometimes, can, yeah. <laughs> sometimes I remind myself. Not I in try, those I have reflection months, myself. right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Day. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Monday after we close, yeah. we'll see how. <laughs> we'll talk on Tuesday. Yeah, we'll talk on Tuesday. <laughs> waiting table. We'll Jerry's tell, right? <laughs> At least give it till next week. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Now, are you interested in going out for like TV and film projects, or are you going to stay uh, stage based because that's your well, forte and your power? Maybe something's coming down the pipeline. Ah, so we got a number four anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we got four. We got five. Maybe, yeah, we doing have, stuff. We, we we're booked for we the are, next yeah, three years. Done. It's gonna be. It's gonna be your official website now. Yeah, right? done. Change it from the actor's <laughs> audience. CoreyJacoma.com. Co- yeah, Corey Jacoma's audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody else. Oh, it's, it's synonymous. The actor's yeah. audience. Same and, thing, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, what are you looking now to do once you? come down are you going to focus on your writing to get the ep out are you going to are going to now that you have the momentum are you going to go balls to the wall and like really fight hard not that you haven't fought hard in between but like now that you have that reinvigorated spirit that you didn't have before yeah you know uh i think that the next steps are really uh molding a career you know and and making sure because i've been very uh very fortunate that and i've noticed recently that i've been steadily climbing the rungs of mm-hmm. the ladder and how do now that we've gotten to a, a higher rung you know I, I was very fortunate I sort of skipped a rung uh, and jumped to a lead on Broadway and that was I was like I I sort of you know am still grasping at it can I challenge um, you on that yeah, though why sure. do you feel like you skipped a rung you were a lead off Broadway so why what where what did you skip uh you know I think there's like sometimes people uh, move in doing ensemble work and then and work then their way up lead. or, okay, or yeah. swinging or understudying. Um, but don't you feel you paid your dues already being a lead in, in such recognizable shows? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. You know, I think that uh, I think that the experience certainly helped. And you know what? I did understudy a lead uh, at Paper Mill. That, right. That's a great point. And even though that wasn't Broadway, you know, Paper Mill Still is, theater, is yeah. a, it's a 1500 seat theater and, yeah and that's a lot bigger than most broadway houses so maybe maybe you're right R- remind me because i'm a little fuzzy because yeah. i know no, it's no, no. based on a true story yeah. 
but was your per- the part that you were playing based on a true person based or was it a it, meld it was of, a, of, yeah an amalgamation of a couple people so then technically this is your second time playing a real person or do you consider this your third I consider this my second time yeah um, because trip in British invasion who I was understudying he was based on real people but we had a lot of leeway you know mm-hmm. he, he was based on Mick Jagger and I'm nothing like Mick Jagger so I had to create my own version of this sort of like this you know bad boy from from uh, I don't forget exactly where he's from but you know this like sort of uh, you know laissez-faire sort of lifestyle right. uh, of a bad boy mm-hmm. you know I, I tapped into a little bit of Russell Brand a little bit of Mick Jagger and I was sort of pulling inspiration from everyone which makes me feel like it wasn't based on that person, on one person. because with Jerry I had to figure out that guy mm-hmm. with Bob I had to figure out that guy with with trip it was like okay I'll take a little bit of this I'll take a little bit of this I'll take a little bit of this you know if I was playing I don't know Jean Valjean in Les Mis right, right. <laughs> um, hey like, yeah next hey who knows next step. Um, I would you know I would take a little bit of this I would take you know I read a great book uh, by I believe his name's Austin Cleon it's called steal like an artist uh-huh. and it's a fun read and it's very it encourages you to steal like an artist because ultimately Everything in entertainment is stolen. You know, everything's Shakespearean. Everything is based on something. You know, um, so why not draw inspiration and create your own thing? You know, it's like how do you create a new cocktail? You throw a bunch of stuff into yeah. a thing and taste it and go, that's not bad. <laughs> so that's yeah, that's sort of what I did with Trip. Well, what, understudying Trip. What do you do to turn off Corey and get yourself prepared for your performances? You know, I because don't. You're always high energy, which you need mm-hmm. to be to be in a performance of a yeah. Broadway, off Broadway show, whichever it is. But you're also very, you know, your character may not call for right being as bubbly as you. You know, I think that, I think that I bring a little bit of myself into my characters. I think that uh, I I capitalize on this uh, joyous energy that comes naturally to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I, I capitalize on that because. And it was actually uh, something that my one of my favorite teachers and dear friends of mine, uh, J.V. Mercanti, uh, he said, always find the joy in, in it. You know, even in a sad song, even in a song that's a breakup song or, or a, you know, a song about someone who just died, you know, find the joy in it. Because no one wants to watch someone crying for, for three minutes in a song. Like, there's got to be joy in it. Because even in those moments of heartbreak, even in the moments that there's pain, there's always something, there's always, uh, you know, it's like... You're, you're almost remembering the good times yeah, remember because you're so times. upset about the bad times. Or, you know, like... Or the death or whatever. Yeah, like, is. you know, I, I, I've i been broken up with and while I was crying, it was like I would laugh at myself for crying so hard. And, right. and that's a moment of levity in such a sad moment. So you need to bring those little moments, you know, when if someone passes, you know, and, and you're bawling your eyes out because, because they're not in your life anymore... And then you remember a time, and as tears were running down your face, you start giggling to yourself. Yeah, I think and, that happens you know, a lot, like at viewings and funerals. Yeah, or and also having hope that it's mm-hmm. gonna that the tides will turn. Um, so I think that bringing a little bit of myself into characters is inevitable, uh-huh. um, and finding that joy. But also, um, it's it's not about me. You know, Jerry, when I step on stage, it's not about me. I want the audience to like my performance, mm-hmm. but ultimately I'm not responsible for them liking my performance. Mm-hmm. I'm responsible for telling Jerry's story. And a lot of time, I get to the stage door and people are like, I hate it, you dude, because Jerry's the antagonist of the show. Right. And um, Has that been something for you to get used to? Because you were, I mean, obviously people didn't yeah. hate Gaudio when you were in Jersey Boys. It is, it is interesting, um, you know, having... having so the the caveat of that is I, I have to I sort of lose the audience at one point and they they because I I don't physically but I emotionally hurt the protagonist of the show Carol King and the audience claps me off stage basically because uh, well claps Carol off stage because she finally puts her foot down um, whereas then at the end of the show I have one scene at the very end where he redeems himself and. He apologizes. Well, now that you know, 
that the show's closed. I was just <laughs> going to say, but yeah. on tour, spoiler alert, but yeah. go see it on tour. <laughs> At the end of the show, you know, there he apologizes, and there's that one little scene to redeem him, and so and you realize his flaws and that he's just a flawed man. He's not a bad person. Um, and Carol's uh, Carol King's one piece of advice for Jerry's is don't let the audience hate him because she still loves him. You know, she uh, rumor has it she wears his ashes around her neck, and mm -hmm. so so knowing how passionately she feels about this man finding the redeeming qualities in him is crucial mm -hmm. um but it is very weird you know in those moments where i have to lean into the like the negative side of him and i feel the energy of the audience and luckily i can shake it and be like that's not me that's it's on jerry right, right. well, well the character the character of jerry um but it you know it, it is interesting feeling that you probably had a lot more interactions now at stage doors because Jersey Boys didn't have like the hugest yeah. stage door experience because of the way it's laid out there. Yeah, and you know, especially because of the closing date, more and more people are coming to the show, and we've been sold out pretty much the whole time I've been here. Thank God. Um, and so, getting to meet people at the stage stage door has been really cool because you know, and once in a while I'm exhausted, but I always try to remind myself that ultimately these people. In the people who are going to be coming to see the show, and and uh, what is you're it? like, oh, it's on. Oh, like, we, oh, we got to stop. We got to wrap. Uh, here. No, in in you know, forty five minutes, the <clears throat> the people seeing the show are the reason that I have a job. Are the reason that I'm still employed. You know, mm -hmm. um, the people who didn't see it are the reasons it's closing. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> oh, no, but you know, it's uh, it, it, you know, they they are the reason that theater exists. Mm -hmm. You know. If, if it weren't for an audience, we'd just be a bunch of people saying silly lines and singing, trying to sound good. And like, it, you know, it, it wouldn't be the same, you know, part of the audience is the, the last cast member, mm -hmm. you know, when you're in tech, there's one cast member that's always missing until the audience shows up and that's them. Mm -hmm. Um, and so getting to give back after, even though I've been, I, you give and give and give for two and a half hours during the show, it's nice to give back from Corey rather than you know giving a, them right r rather than as a performer show them a little bit of who I am thank them for coming to see the show um hearing stories you know I had one person came up to me that that really really touched me she said thank you for honoring mental illness the way that you did uh -huh. because Jerry dealt with mental illness throughout his life and so to have someone thank me for that who dealt with it themselves meant just it, the world to me um is that something in the back of your mind that you think about that you can be affecting somebody oh, absolutely whether it i mean obviously in jersey boys you it's a it's a little bit depressing at certain points yeah. but it's mostly a feel-good musical yeah. and you know yeah. people are pumped and are so excited and dancing but you know do you feel that responsibility yeah absolutely you know um a, a dear friend of mine once said that uh Every show is someone's first show, and mm -hmm. every show is someone's last show. Mm -hmm. You know, whether that's a kid who's never seen theater, could or you know, could never afford theater and won a ticket on the radio. I don't know, or or if it's you know, someone's dying wish, or you know, you don't know what happens when you leave the theater, or, you know, yeah, walking yeah. down the street. Um, so it's always someone's first show, and it's always someone's last show. And so to go into it with that energy and that mentality and that uh, urgency mm -hmm. and being like this matters you know as tired as i am as awful of a day as i've had you know as as exhausted as i may be take Corey and remove him his feelings towards this because also you know another the the other side of it is if i don't want to do it as badly as the next person then i shouldn't be here mm -hmm. you know because there are people who would die to be in my shoes and i that is not lost on me Corey, you deserve every amount of success that you have. You know, you. you know, you know, you've always got a fan <laughs> of me, but but honestly, you. you're a good dude, and you, you know, you. you're humble and you're excited, and it's like every day to me feels like it's your first day <laughs> with it being in. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're so excited about every performance, and I, I am. You're not at that sermon drying point, like oh shit, I got. Well, it helps. Show it again. helps only having two months. <laughs> <laughs> but but thank no, but you've you. always count, like you've always been a count your blessings kind of guy from yeah. from what I could tell from our interaction yeah. so and I, I i that that's the biggest compliment you could give me because i i definitely am i 
fully aware of all the blessings in my life. How, how challenging has it been to be in a two performer uh, relationship and, and trying to be supportive it's and yet her being supportive of you and then she's like, oh, I got to be happy about mine. <laughs> shit, yours is closing. Well, you and, know, but hey, we got a we, dog though. We are, <laughs> it's like got to be a roller coaster. We are, we are very fortunate that we have both been working very consistently, yeah. but it's hard because of things like jobs taking you out of town and, right. and you know have long distance relationships and not seeing that person every day. That's tough, and ultimately, the only way it's going to work is if you make it work, and if you want it to work. Right. Um, and you know, in in the most challenging times, you have to remind yourself why you're doing it. Um, and uh, I'm very fortunate because she is incredible, and I don't know what I'd do without her. Wow, I feel like that's a perfect place to end. <laughs> she paid me massive <laughs> amounts of money to get you to open up. But... <laughs> So, uh, oh man, no, she's uh, the best. Yeah, I'll uh, DM her my address. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Corey, thank you so much uh, for taking pleasure. the time again. I, Anytime. I can't wait till, yeah, don't say that. It'll be like a weekly <laughs> thing. Next week. It's like Mondays with Corey. Or <laughs> I'll take but, it. Yeah, but honest to God, I really appreciate all your time, all your, you know, thank you. constant communication is hey, it's my pleasure. very important. Thank you so much, Corey. Thank you.